You know much that is hidden, though, Tim. Quite. Welcome everybody back to the 2v2 league. We got a fun match here today between Team 1, the Fuzzy Bunnies of Kalash Banog. <laughs> Which, let me tell you, that's an amazing name. That is an amazing name. Against the Unbound, um, making a reappearance here because it's a lot easier to schedule, let's be honest. This time, going to be comprised of Frosty Teeth and Tomcat Zeno. Map here is going to be the Boneyard. It's a fun map. Uh, it's a little interesting in 2v2, especially if you play the 1v1 map a lot, you'll notice that it's actually quite a lot different. Um, as you know, like, one player normally spawns right here, and like, this rock is not even part of the map. So it's quite a lot longer in the, uh, in the 2v2 version. A bit more of an oblong shape right there. This, this site here remains relatively, you know, familiar. But yeah, so we got, uh, what do we got here? Mask the Red Death playing as the, uh, Coalition. We got Mazrim playing as the Soban. These are both pretty decent players. I'm excited to see what they're able to pull off here. I think definitely the, the highest, you know, like the best player, oh, why have I done this? Um, the best player in this lobby right now has got to be Tom Cadzino. You know, he's definitely kind of a feared character. People know who this guy is and they're always a little bit wor uh, worried about him. Pretty good at Blast Zone Cheese, but really he's, you know, he's the Siege Cruiser guy. And he's good at what he does, so you gotta always be careful when you're playing against Tom Cadzino. You know. And then uh, here playing with his typical, really nice looking sort of white and green colors is gonna be Frosty Teeth. The 2v2 league organizer, so a big shout out to him for playing in this match. Um, he's of course a member of uh, Karakid Ice Cream, and I can't remember what Tom Cadzino's team is to be honest, but I don't think they've played a match yet if I'm not mistaken. Or something like that. But you know, they'll put aside their differences today and they'll play together as the Unbound, which I think is pretty cool. Now Mask going for quite a couple of uh, early LAVs right here. That might be good. I honestly think that the um, the best way to deal with Tomcat in the early game, or in the in the game, is to just attack him really quickly in the early game. Just try to get him out of the way. By the way, you do you should notice these uh, blast drones here, and I'm not sure if Mazarin scouted that with the probe, but based on the, on the fact that the probe hasn't taken any damage, I don't think he has. Mask gonna move out with these um, LEVs in the early game. I like this move. Like I was saying, I'd actually uh, I'd actually be curious to see what would happen if like both players just spammed LAVs and sent them over here, like, maybe they'd be able to take Tomcat out immediately, but I'm not sure, though. I, I don't really... I haven't really tried enough of these things out in 2v2 to know that. Uh-oh, Probe gonna find this, and that is good. Remember in my last video I said, always find the base... FIND THE BASE RUNNER, right? They found it, or at least they found, you know, the, uh, the remnants thereof. So they know this is coming. And AAV fabrication gonna be on the way from Azrum. Excellent choice right there. If AAVs come out on the field, these blast drones will be nullified, um, so long as they're just kind of kept like one there, one there. What the heck? The rocks here are a little bit odd, but but trust me, you can actually go around them, I'm quite sure. Can you? What the freak? I don't know. Point is, uh, that way, you know, you won't get blast drawn to death. Uh-oh. Actually, they're coming a little bit faster than I assumed. There's action kind of going on everywhere, though, so I'll try to cover it here. Um, a lot of good damage being done by Mask of the Red Death there, and meanwhile, aha, ALMs, they're actually proven rather effective here, aren't they? Are there any a AAVs? There are. AAVs in the area, salvagers being evacuated. Looks like no damage is going to be done there, really. LAVs, meanwhile, I believe they've gotten a kill already, if you look at the units lost tab over here. Uh, yeah, for us, he's gotten two, um, salvager deaths already. Mask needs to focus fire just a little bit better. Uh, this soldier here could go down, but gonna just kind of transition onto Tomcat soldiers. That's not a bad idea either. His carrier will be a little bit more um, able to take out these LAVs though. But one soldier gonna go down there for sure. No, you've got to kill this one. Oh, 23 health on that one there. Oh no. But yeah, amazingly those blast drones actually managed to get out, but they're not gonna they're not gonna find any damage. And looks like Mask's LAV is going to get killed right here, but there is definitely a Salvager there that should have died, I think. Let's see, Tomcat going straight into Siege Cruiser Fabrication, who's surprised, as well as Refinery, but coming out about the same time here. Mask going to be going into Railgun Fabrication, Mazrim into Missile Batteries, that's an interesting choice, but I suppose she, uh, she? This is a she, you see. 
But yeah, he's worried about um, he's worried about air tech from Tomcat. That does make sense. Tomcat playing uh, playing obviously the um, assault ship line here, so you do want to be watching out for that. Looks like it's going to be a double extraction from the Unbound here. Should rather expect so anyway. But one thing I do worry about for um, the fuzzy bunnies of Kalashbanog, which <laughs> that's an amazing name, but one thing I do worry about is that they're not really expanded yet onto a uh, second base. And you see both of the Unbound are. That's going to give them quite an eco edge here if that continues to be such. Mask Space Runner probably going to get caught out here. And by the way, Majir, if you're watching, this is something that I've noticed is happening with the... Uh, whoa, it got really big right there. I think this is happening with the uh, the replay viewer that I have, but I'm not sure. But these green lines often get a little funny. I can replicate it quite easily if I uh, select a unit, give him multiple move commands, like using shift. Then if I do like more than three, then suddenly it's just like green is everywhere, you know what I mean? Just a quick little thing. But anyway, um... Yeah, I really do worry for them if they don't expand onto another base there. That's something that they need to do. Wait, oh, hold on a second. This base runner is still alive? These, dude, you guys are faster than it. How did you not... Oh, well, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Mag Accelerator coming out from Mask. That's a good choice, obviously. Um... But no, no other additional, like, interesting check choices, really. Tomcat going into Railguns, though. That's pretty interesting. And his first siege cruisers are just now beginning to come out. They're going to get scouted pretty early on by this AAV right here. He's going to give his life for the cause. And then Tomcat going to go into interceptor fabrication. But his choice of railguns is interesting because he really usually tends not to use those. Railgun fabrication now coming out from Frosty Teeth, who is on three bases. And this is what I usually uh, this is what I usually am a little bit disappointed with when I watch his games, that he doesn't expand fast enough. And look at that, he's on three bases, so... But more importantly, look at his opponents. They are not. They're still on one. Um, there we go. Mazrim now expanding onto two. Uh, mask following suit? No? no? Yeah, yeah, she is. Okay. Um, but yeah, Frosty Teeth, the first one on the three bases, and he's definitely got the eco edge now. Just needs to make sure he doesn't get taken out by these railguns, but he has, does have a superior number of LAVs, though they are not upgraded as well, it looks like. Um, so I think that... Hmm, will he be able to take this fight? Yeah, I think he probably will. That's going to push these railguns back, obviously. And Frosty will be able to saturate this third base. Actually, he's not on three bases, is he? Because he doesn't have any salvagers here, but he will be soon. One AV here just being super annoying, just kind of slowing down that siege cruiser even more, and that was made ages ago, but it still just has not been able to push out across the map because it's constantly trying to deal with other things. I really like that move quite a lot. Frosty's LAVs, meanwhile, here were met with quite a lot of resistance, and they do end up going down, it looks like. Heavy Vehicles Armor 3 coming out for him. I like that choice a lot, but his army is actually pretty small here, so I don't think he'll be able to do too much unless he can get a considerable number of railguns right here. And indeed, Mask's railguns even have high ground here, so they're taking a mad efficient fight. But I do like the uh, the upgrades there. And Mask is really doing a good job of kind of besieging this area. And there's a missile battery from Mazarin covering it. Missile battery here, here. These interceptors from Tomcat are going to have a hard time finding, uh, you know, a good location to attack from. But now there's a siege cruiser from Tomcat in this area, and that should push off these railguns. Uh, possibly anyway. It's actually going to be a contested fight, I suppose. But at any rate, you know, um, four railguns. It's not clear that they're. It's not clear who's going to win that fight, basically. Uh, Frosty Teeth can push back now. I think he should with his carrier and then get that base resaturated, just because um, the railguns are no longer in that area. But they could return, of course. Well, that is true. Mask going to get missile battery fabrication. And I like that you kind of do want to be self-sufficient with your army there. Just make sure that if you push out and your opponent didn't quite get the memo, you're not suddenly going to get hit by precision bombers and just, like, die or something. Um, that could always happen, of course. Tomcat now has six uh, interceptors in the hangar. That's actually not a bad targeting jammer at all, is it? And he's going to stun the, uh, the unit in there as well. 
Oh man, look at that. Look at that coordination. All that to get less than less than 100 damage. But, you know, <laughs> that's life, isn't it? <laughs> that was pretty that was pretty darn cool. But now Mazarin's sitting inside of it. How many interceptors, Tom Cat? Still six. Still six. Um, let's see then. Interceptor's flying in here trying to do some damage to this base runner that has the artifact. There's a missile ship in the area, so that will get taken out, but at what cost? This one intercept interceptor is going to go down, and all of them basically going to take some damage there. Uh, Frosty Teeth here is still not able to reclaim this third base. He's still been held off of that. And uh, Mask is now on two and a half. So is Mazarim. Tom is on three, though. So I still think the Eco Edge has got to go to the Unbound here, but only just. And uh, Frosty Teeth still having a little bit of a difficult time, you know, just getting control of this map here. Of this side of the map, anyway, from uh, Mask of the Red Death. Let's see here. What's the Siege Cruiser count at now? Just one. We do have another one on the way, as you can see from Tomcat. Beginning to lose frame rate, that's always nice. Interceptor's just gonna go on a probe hunt. And they will get several. They did get hit by AA of some kind, but it looks like the red missile, which is kinda odd, because I don't think either player has got support cruiser anti air. Oh yeah, they do actually. So Mazarum has support cruiser anti air, that's probably what we saw there. Yeah, Tomcat's still doing a good job of, you know, finding uh, places that he can do some damage with these um, air units. Although he didn't quite get that base runner, but that's not always easy. And Frosty's still being uh, kind of held back here. Still not able to take this fight because of the high ground position right here. And I gotta say, looking at that, that is a very difficult position to hold for the red team. Because there's a hill, you know, in railgun range of that third base. So the method of choice here seems to be to fire barrages on that hill. And uh, some, a run by LAV is going to do a good job here from Frosty as well. Taking out one railgun. Probably going to get two if he focus fires. I mean, focus fire is not bad. There's a second. Finally going to get shut down by this carrier here. Oh, and Mask is going to go for Battle Cruiser Fabrication. I like that move a lot, actually. Siege Cruiser trying to pressure on this end at any rate to stop the artifact from extracting. Uh, and that is going pretty well. And the air unit's still circling around looking for victims, but the anti-air is pretty solid all around the board. Really impressed by um, the, the fuzzy bunnies for that one. BCs are finished now for Mask of the Red Death. Probably going to begin making those pretty much immediately. I should just I should just never make predictions, you know, because they're always wrong. Anyway, um, what's the choice going to be here from Mazarim? I wonder. Assault cruisers are researched. Uh, probably moving into artillery then to counter the siege. That's what I would think of first off, but I don't know. Artillery tech still not touched. Interceptors bite off a little bit more than they could chew there, and they do take two losses. I think they got one salvager. Or no, they got three salvagers. Wow, that's actually... That's not bad, but for that many losses, still probably not worth it. Um, Sport Cruiser Anti-Air is there, of course. LAV is desperately trying to stop this base runner from extracting, and I think that they will. There it goes. And it looks like Frosty Teeth has finally discovered that the method for success in this case is have lots of units. And now he has lots of units. And that is going to allow him to win this fight for sure. You can see him taking some pretty nasty shots there against uh, Mask. Doing a lot of good damage. 
Interceptors are still in the area, taking names, of course. Um, Barrage is coming down from the siege cruisers. They're really being annoying to uh, Mazarin here. Holding them off of these bases. Doing some good damage is Tomcat. And you know, I kind of wonder about using barrages against the eco. I'd like... A lot of people do that, but I actually tend not to. And I'm wondering if there's, you know... A, like a case to be made either way. that Like you should or that you shouldn't. I don't know. Still no sign of battlecruiser tech from Mask of the Red Death, but... That is obviously like the counter to this army. Like BCs would definitely counter all of this. And Tomcat has got railgun fabrication. Maybe that's why he got it. I don't know though. But, uh, he does not have any railguns out on the field. Honestly, he may have gotten it by mistake. I, I, I'd be uh, curious to see what he said. Oh, whoa! A couple of sand skimmers. Just a couple. I think there was even a blast drone in there. Okay, how many sand skimmers is this? 21 with a blast drone mixed in. My goodness, Tomcat. And how many upgrades? Yeah, of course he's got full upgrades too. And now he's queuing up three bombers. Oh. Oh, oh. He's going for something here. He's going for something. More and more probes getting killed off in the middle. But uh, this is... Uh, that's a dead support cruiser if there ever was one. Blast drone is used against the um, salvagers. Speeds up the, the death of the support cruiser just a little bit. I approve. This mortar could be huge. Tell me, like, right there, right there. Ooh. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Ooh. Looks like it's not actually going to be used there, but oh man, that could have been redonkulous. That could have been redonkulous, let me tell you. Meanwhile, uh, Frosty Teeth trying to push in as well, make this kind of like a double attack here. And he has got quite the railgun numbers, I gotta say. And this is starting to look really bad for the, uh, for the fluffy bunnies. Even a lot of pressure being done by these siege cruisers on Mazarin's side, and he's just kind of charging right in there, Yolo's side with the carrier. That's not really very good, I don't think. I honestly think he's kind of at risk of getting carry sniped here, but Tomcat doesn't see it. <laughs> and he's gonna back away. Oh man, Mazarin. You're playing with fire over there, that could've been really bad for you. Let's see here. These sand skimmers still just kind of running amok, and now it's going to be triple bomber deploy from Tomcat, and that can be, that can be absolutely backbreaking. Hasn't gotten the ammo capacity or anything like that, but these things still will take out uh, missile batteries pretty quickly. Oh boy, that could be pretty big. Holds off the retreat, and if Mask is at power five, she's not. But if she was, maybe that could have actually even been like you know an entire army wipe there. But Mask's carrier is still rather deadly. If she powers up one more into the weapons here. Use a nice mortar. A mortar here would be... Oh, that would be delicious. You've got to do it. You've got to. Oh, man. I really want to see it, but it's not going to happen. But I think Frosty's army got a little bit cut off here, and it's it's going to take some losses. Uh, the Sand Skimmer Trail just getting slowed down so much as it runs past that army by those ALMs. And I'm gonna say this is an overextension because Frosty can leave now, but he's just, he's staying there. He's staying there for so long. And the damage is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Mask just now powering up that carrier. And I know tons of damage has been done to the Fluffy Bunnies so far, but the entire army of Frosty Teeth is basically gone, unless you count these missile batteries as something worthwhile. But still, though, a number of siege cruisers there. Five siege cruisers now for Tomcat. That's a, that's a very significant force. Got to apologize for the slowdown here. I'm sure it looks pretty egregious on YouTube, but that's alright. And now Mazarim in here with quite an army of railguns. Double, double mortar, double mortar. Oh, yes, yes, yes! Oh, look at it! It's beautiful! It's beautiful. That was exactly what I was wanting to see this whole time. Just when skimmers are blobbed like that, there's such a potential for, like, insane mortar action. Um, mortar ba uh, missile batteries are good that way. Same with missile ships, you know? That's what I love about those anti-air units, is that they really do have some, uh, some function as, like, anti-blob um, anti units as well. I think at this point, Frosty Teeth is pretty much neutralized, as far as army is concerned. 
They should either push on him or Mask should start making battle cruises and they should try to push back on Tomcat and try to get some more air over on this side. This is obviously not what you want to see. There's a little bit more red than blue on that side of the map there. Uh, and Mask is, no, sorry, Mazarin is being held off actually of two bases, not even just one. Um, so I'd like to see them try to do something about that, and battle cruisers from uh, Mask would be a really good choice here. But that is seven siege cruisers. That is actually crazy. And honestly, this amount of siege cruisers makes it difficult to use battle cruisers, I suppose, because eventually you'll get to the point where the barrage can actually like start threatening to kill them, and that's when it gets a little bit too much, you know. We got salvagers retiring over on this end right here. They should actually be sent over there and then support cruiser there as well. Support cruiser's moving over, that's good. I I mean, I don't know. I, I think that uh, the Unbound is definitely ahead here, but there's still potential for disaster. What is this? These are three assault cruisers. That's an interesting choice, but it could work well. This is kind of a close quarters fight here. But both carriers are going to come to this area and try to just destroy this. As f oh no, Mask is going to lose her carrier here, I think. Oh, that's close. That's close, man. Okay, so she better she better run. Um, better than losing it, though. And this is like a Mazrum all-in. Look at this. Uh, just completely abandoning this location entirely. And that could be bad. Mask's carrier says 0% on the health there. One more hit by these assault cruisers and it's gonna go down. Oh, it just barely goes down. So Mask does die. Mazarin's army gets eaten up by some nice barrages from those siege cruisers. And looks like he must go down as well then. They're gonna call the GG and we see a lot of explosions all over the map. And that's game. Wow, that was pretty that was pretty exciting actually. So, yeah, I'm really wondering what would happen if both players just spammed LAVs and sent them at Tomcat. Like, could you actually just kill them off in the early game like that? I don't know. But uh, what did the Unbound do to win here? They basically just did a good job holding their opponents off of bases for a while. Um, this Mass Siege Cruiser here is, like, it's actually insane. And you really need to stop the Mass Siege Cruiser before it can get started, really, just by having engagements, you know what I mean? Uh, the more fights you take... Um, even if you trade evenly, the less likely your opponent is going to get to this point. Um, and that's good for you. That's very good for you. Uh, as for, like, Frosty Teeth, I think that after he lost his whole army there, they should have pushed him a bit more aggressively. But Mask's carry was at low health, and indeed it was a cruise missile that kind of scored the kill on her anyway, so... I can understand why they chose to do that. Good game to the Unbound. Um, and, man, I'm loving that, that uh, team name, by the way. <laughs> loving that team name.